Previously, we explored how to create a color picker on our Tessera and program it. Now let's take a look at using what we've had before and building up to work with multiple color pickers. The first thing I'm going to do is go into my interface tab. I'm going to select my color screen, and I'm going to duplicate that. But instead of just doing duplicate, I want to click on the arrow and select duplicate keep control keys. I now have a new instance of this color. I can change its name. We'll just call it color two. But what's important here is that my keys are now the exact same thing as they were in the previous page. All I need to do here to make this work in the interface is change it from a one to a two on each of these elements. So I'll go through do the red one, the green one, the blue, the intensity, and then most importantly, the color picker itself. Since I have a label here with my group number, I'm also going to update that too. So in look, these are exactly the same, except for one says group one and group two, but their keys tell a completely different story. Now let's take a look at our triggers. Here are all of our triggers from a previous lesson. I've got a color picker, my slider move for red, my slider move for green, my slider move for blue, and my slider move for intensity. Let's make some changes to the color picker so that it'll work for any color picker. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of the 001 and replace it with our less than 3D greater than so that it captures a variable. This will now work for any color picker. Inside of our actions, we need to make some changes. The first one is the target. Instead of going to a specific group, we want to use a variable. Now, by selecting 3D here, we've interjected a new variable into our trigger. Remember that color pickers inherently capture three variables, one, two, and three for red, green, and blue. Since we're capturing another variable here, our variables will now be two, three, and four for red, green, and blue. So we just need to come down here and update those. Two, three, and four. Let's take a look at our control values. Instead of just updating the red 001 slider, we now want to use our first variable to choose which slider to update. So I can add my less than three here instead of my 001. We need to make one more change here because now our red value is variable two. So we just need to update this to say variable two. We're going to do the exact same thing for green, changing our 001 to be green less than 3D greater than. And we need to update our variable. This one will now be three. We'll go down to blue, change that to be the exact same thing, add in our 3D variable capture, and update our variable. Finally, we'll have intensity track as well. Come down here and change this just to be 3D. We don't need to update a variable for value here because we're setting a specific 100. Let's go down and take a look at our red sliders. The trigger for our red slider needs to change a little bit too. Instead of working with just red slider 001, we're going to make this work for any of our red sliders. Again, we're going to put in our 3D. Then underneath this, we'll make a couple more adjustments. Just like we updated our color picker, we're going to switch from group to variable in our set RGB and leave that at variable one. Then we're going to update our red value to be variable two. Just like the color picker, we now have a secondary variable. Our first one will now be the slider number, and our second one will be the slider value. So we can make our associations there. We'll do the exact same thing in our set control value, change the value from variable one to variable two. We'll repeat the process for green, changing it to less than 3D greater than, and setting it to variable one and updating our green value to variable two. Same thing inside the control value, just up by one. Lastly, we'll work with blue here. We'll come in and set 3D for the top value, select our color, change it to variable, leave that at variable one, and change our blue value to variable two. Go to our control value and update that to two. Let's take a look at our intensity. We can update that to a capture value. We'll add in our 3D, change our target to be variable, and update which variable is going to our intensity. Let's jump over to our interface tab, select the page switcher, 
and make sure that we'll have our new color picker as part of the used pages. Let's go ahead and upload this and take a look. I'm looking at the group one page on my Tessera and I can select my color picker and move it around and notice I'll just control group one. If I go to my group two page on my Tessera, I can now move my color picker around and independently control that. If we want to add more color pickers, we can go back to our interface tab, duplicate this again, remember to keep control keys, update our relevant keys, so red will become 003, green will become 003, blue will become 003, intensity will become 003, and color picker will become 003. If we've got a label, we might want to update that too. And now all we need to do is add it to our page switcher. Go to edit pages, drag it in. We can upload it now. And now we'll have a third color picker page. Because we're capturing up to a three digit variable now, we can repeat this process for up to 999 color pickers. To go to our group three, we select it on the page switcher. And now we've got control of our group three. Remember, whenever you're working with triggers, it's a good idea to fill out information for your name and description so you remember what steps you took.